The Crypt Interviews in association with Mayo Legend Point Castle Bar. You're listening to The Crypt and today on the show I'm joined by another star of A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Jennifer Rubin who played the role of Taryn in the movie. But Jennifer isn't just known for M Street, she has a whole list of credits to her name including Oliver Stone's The Doors alongside Val Kilmer, The Crush with Alicia Silverstone and Permanent Record with Keanu Reeves to name but a few. So you're very welcome to the show Jennifer. Thank you very much. We're well, going back, right back to the start of your career, before you got into acting, you were a model. Can you tell us a bit about that period in your life? Oh, sure. I was, um, I graduated high school, and I went down to University of Tucson, and I think I was failing. Um, I think I got a warning notice, like I was going to be kicked out, I think like in the third semester, or the first maybe. And um, they were doing a talent search down in the quad for models. Mm. I went down there and, I, and they took me to New York City. Oh my God. I know, like by the skin of my teeth and stuff. And not that school was so terrible, it wasn't. It was, um, you know, it was just the first time I found beer and stuff because, <laughs> um, you know, your, your parents don't let you drink it. I know, we've all, we've all been there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it was fun. And you done, you did really well. You were the face for Calvin Klein. Oh, yeah, there was all that. And there was like a first 50 pages of Vogue in the beginning. Um, yeah, that was really, really fun. I probably would have liked to have a model more than an actor. And um, what was it that made you decide to change your focus to acting? Um, models were just turning, uh, the models were just, uh, just turning into actresses back then. Um, there's, remember, like, in the 80s, they coined that phrase, uh, model turned actor? Mm-hmm. It was just, like, right before then, and, it, it, and so it, it, I didn't have that model turned actress around my name. I didn't stay long in modeling and went straight into acting. And could you tell us a bit about when you auditioned for the role of Taryn? Oh yeah, that was terrific. That was just the perfect audition situation. It was located really close, and then um, the Chuck Russell was really um, a cool and friendly director. Mm-hmm. And I don't know everything about it, the building and all the kids that were reading for it seemed to be all the cool kids like in town and he just picked us and brought us right back we, you know it's like you leave the audition and you get a call to come right back to the building which is the most fun kind of audition there is yeah. and then we all meet up there and then he reads us all together and and then you know he just says something really nice to you in the audition too like good good but like you know don't go too far yeah like so nobody's going off on a tangent and and so you feel really good about that because you can take direction well and then you know yeah they call you they care and that uh Annette Benson lady she was you know casting directors were really super cool too back then she was one of the fun wonderful California girls out here And do you all still keep in contact now? Oh, with them? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I do. (laughs) I'm sure you probably meet up at conventions and that. Yeah, well, some of us, you know, we're all together. You know, all of us dream warriors are together, that's for sure. (laughs) We love that. We love that. Ken and Rodney and Bradley, uh, Penelope, and all the other other kids, too. Robert Ressler from Two and... And um, Amanda Wish, you know. Well, everybody, uh, everybody loved your line. In my dreams, I'm yeah. beautiful and bad. <laughs> had you much, <laughs> had you much input into Taryn's look for her showdown with Freddie? Do you know the big mohawk and that? Well, the big mohawk was all my idea. Oh, was it? That was all of it. Was 
all of that was mine. Isn't that cool? That, so that is... must have been the, just inspiration because I didn't know about the big punk movement in London or all that kind of hard rock or anything. Yeah. And and um, well, I was just walking down the the hall, you know, the hospital corridors and the, or some of those big warehouse corridors. It was pretty big. The sets they made and stuff. And I saw a little mohawk like that in a magazine. Yeah. In Time magazine. One of the camera crew was probably reading and then got called to work and sat it down. So I just serendipitously walked by and went, ooh, ooh, let me ask Chuck if I can do my hair like that. Oh, uh, this you know, is really it was, cool. It was so funny. They, you know, you have to remember I was a little girl and they had that look that, um, they brought me to this this place that made my outfit. It was called Trashy Lingerie. It's like where all the kind of, I guess, just fun people, but, you know, maybe even professionals dress <laughs> for this stuff. So they, we walked in there, and I couldn't believe that this, and this little guy, like a little Danny DeVito in, as the penguin. Yeah. Little guy like that comes right up to me, and this little fat man was gonna make me my dog collar, <laughs> and my <laughs> out with studs on them and cuffs on my shoulders. I couldn't believe it. So I had that experience, and then when I, um, and then when <clears throat> we were on set and they were doing my, probably in the makeup room, I went to walk. That's when I walked to Chuck Russell. But I saw that. I was going to ask a completely different question, and then I saw that hair, and I said, that's the hair to go with that outfit, because the boobs are up, and yeah. the hair is up. It was it was a, a spectacular, and the little rhinestones by my eyes. <laughs> so, all that kind of stuff. They were wonderful, that crew of people. You know, the little hair ladies, and go like purple glitter in my hair and put all these touches on it. That was all pretty cool by them. And were you were you a fan of Nightmare on Elm Street before getting the part, or was it all new to you? Well, I I knew the movie came out. I didn't um I didn't know about it. I definitely knew that Johnny Depp was in it, and I and. I when I then I got the audition and they like maybe I said oh what's Nightmare on Elm Street well Johnny Depp did it I'm like well if it's good enough for Johnny it's good enough for me <laughs> went on the audition <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I went on the audition and you know everybody else was don't do it don't do it don't do it God and little, I don't know Johnny was good enough for me and little did you know so many years later people are still watching it and still talking about it. Yeah, right? It yeah. was some, some of the worst advice I ever got was from an agent. I think it's a, it's one of the best ones in the whole franchise, part three. Yeah, it is because that, you know, it's Chuck Russell and that Frank Darabont, you know, Frank wrote those great um, movies, like deep, like spiritual movies, mm-hmm. like Josh Anchor, you know, some of that stuff and those movies are pretty, you know, oh, with guy with the, you know, it was, you know, it's pretty spiritual stuff he does. And then Chuck Russell has all the sense of humor, you know, and the razzle dazzle. Yeah. He's a real razzle dazzle. Yeah. You know, he remember when he did the mask and then he got his chance to do those big swinging arms and, yeah. you know, he kind of moves and yada yada. All that kind of stuff is Chuck, you know, but... He did so. He took like what a sinking ship, and then not it really, but um, and made it more boingy boingy, didn't he? And I think the whole idea of each of you having your own special powers in your dreams, do you know, that was something new brought to the table. Yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. 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 It, and yeah. See, there it is. Dreams are important. That that's probably that is where the deep. That is, the, see, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of the, the teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right, that's right. What horrors would have scared you as a child? What movie scared me as a child? Yeah. Oh, I know, I, I loved it, but I um, I liked that one. I think it was Jodie Foster, I think, some house at the end. 
of the road. I get them confused. There's one with the, the little kid, and he, he takes the mouse into his nanny real spookily, and she dies. Like, scary, you know, I loved all the kids scary, scaring the nanny. It was like house at the end of the yeah. road or cabin at the, you know, the last cabin to the left. I don't really know the names of them, yeah. but... Ooh, I love those. As I say, anything with dolls coming to life or little girl ghosts, they're the worst. You know what scared me the most was um, all those doors in uh, that cartoon with uh, one guy looks like an eye and the other one uh, was like a fluffy ant, like a fluffy stuffed toy. And there was a girl... He, um, I don't know what the name of that. It was a recent one. It was like kind of like Pixar or something. Oh, Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Yeah. When they shot all those, when they looked at all the doors that you could go into, that was me out. Moving on from Nightmare on Elm Street, in 1991, you were in Oliver Stone's The Doors. Well, the, well, the thing with The Doors was how I got that role was. Um, Oliver Stone called me in to read Jim Morrison's. Yeah. So, for two days, they auditioned, um, like five, I think I read with like five gyms and five gyms and stuff like that. And afterwards, Oliver asked me, he said, you can have a role in the movie. Do you want to be Edie Sedgwick or do you want to be the stewardess? And I thought, duh. Yeah. <laughs> Edie, <laughs> I'll please. Take Edie. So I, I took Edie, and um, I was shooting a movie with Robert Downey Jr. called Too Much Sun, directed by his father, Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. And uh, Eric Idle was in that movie, and he was at the Chateau Marmont, the famous Chateau Marmont, and he was sitting on the steps flirting with uh, Valerie Galino, Mm -hmm. the big Italian girl at the time. He slips on the stairs and breaks his spine, pushes us behind schedule, and then on both days, the day I'm supposed to shoot on Oliver Stone's movie, um, Eric's ready to go back to work in this little movie that we need her. So I had to shoot around the clock, but I, and I didn't have time to go to um, hair and makeup for just, you know, for the trial, like before shooting. Yeah. So um, they put, uh, I wore, I actually wore Andy Warhol's wig, the one that Andy, no <laughs> we just styled it differently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we just kind of saved the day and blazed through blaze through that filming, but I filmed for a week, and it was awesome, uh, and Oliver Stone was awesome, like a kitten. Yeah, like it's a, a great kitten. movie. And and the scenes were great and long, and he said he should have left me in there long enough, but that movie was like 400 hours, and he had to cut it down to three, so there's one where I'm just dancing all by myself and there's bombs being dropped on some of projector. Yeah, uh, yeah. Behind me. I'm dancing and I get a kiss Val Kilmer. I should say Jim Morrison, but... Yeah, we can pretend it was Jim yeah. Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was, he was yeah. amazing as Jim Morrison in that movie. Absolutely amazing. It couldn't have been better. Oh. It couldn't have been better. Well, you always hear people saying he's really difficult to work with on set. Did you find that when you were working with him? No, he, you know, he was fun. I used to say, hey, Val, you make a better door than a window. <laughs> <laughs> and he he writes poetry. And he signed, um, we got to know each other a little bit and he wrote, he gave me a book of his poetry and he signed it to me. And I'm not like, yeah, I'm not like, you no. Know, so, I mean, we were must we must have been talking about poetry the night before, and then you know, at the day of work, he he gave me a book. You know, his oh, that's poetry. That's really nice. I mean, that's something. That kind of guy. Yeah. I I don't re- remember. Um, I wasn't really with the you know the plan of the movie where they were 
spending time together in the desert. I wasn't mm-hmm. a part of that. But as far as when they were coming on set and as I was breezing through, he was a dream. Yeah. He was a dream. And he's still married, and he's like a good husband actor, you know. he's You don't hear about him doing all weird stuff. You say he's an asshole. He's probably good at what he does. Well, do you know what? That's probably it. They can't find anything else to say about him, so they jump on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, of all the roles you've played, what's been your personal favourite and why? Um, I think my first... Well, my, I'd have to say my first few movies would be my favourite one movie because it's just so spectacular being in movies those first few glorious times yeah. with your... You know, I had a dream agent and he would send me out and I would get parts. And then I would film it and, well, and get ready for my next one and get ready for my next one. I mean, when the balls really starts rolling like that. And, and then, you know, <clears throat> cut to 55 films later and 50 televi- you know, television shows, not 50, but like 20 <laughs> or and 100, you know, 50 commercials. Yeah. You know, it just becomes like, oh, my God, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so, it's all jobs. But in the beginning, it's just... You're young and you're just so excited to be there, and it's you know it's great that it's happening. Yeah. And what what are you doing these days? What am I doing these days? Is well, all that experience. I wrote a script. I am finishing a script. In fact, I have only like it's been proofread and proofread and proofread, and I've had fifty. No, there's forty actors that did a table read of it and it went swimmingly and I have really good uh, mentorship so we're de- you know it's like being the story is being developed he said I did all the hard thing I did great and there's this one simple thing I have to change or get rid of I don't need it and I turned it into something and then I have half a scene left to write and then you know I hope I really pray that it stay, gets, I think it is in the right hands who's developing it, and it just gets in the right hands. That oh, it fantastic. Goes. And what what genre of movie is it? Well it's, a, uh, well, it's a family drama, but it's called Citizen Hemp. It's a family drama set on a, a America's largest uh, marijuana plantation. So I'm not using marijuana as an accessory. Yeah. I'm using it just as a backdrop and then just real family drama because I think we're, we need a movie that discusses family with that. So, um, and it's wonderful and it's funny. And when the feedback came back, is they say, they, oh, the humor. Oh, my God. But oh, it's brilliant. not like running around stoned humor. I don't even know <laughs> if anybody gets that high. I mean, everybody gets, I'm sure, is high in my movie. <laughs> it's not about seeing them get high. Oh, well, I hope that does really well for you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then, you're coming for fans. You're coming to London Comic Con in July. That's right, right. I hope everybody comes out and sees me and brings their DVD boxes and all that stuff. That's just a terrific. It's going to be. It's tr- I, love, I love it out there already. London, I've been there before, so. Oh, it's going to be so much fun because, like, Freddie's going to be there, Robert Russell is going to be there. Do you know, there's so many from Nightmare on Elm Street, and then they have the big Back to the Future reunion as well. Oh, really? Yeah, so, oh, it's going to be so much fun. Hey, well, Rita, are you going to uh, London? I am definitely going. I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to meeting <laughs> everybody at it. <laughs> That's what's so great. That's he, now I'll tell you, the best thing about being in movies is, Having been in some, and then they when they do these cons, which I don't know, you know, then you and and then your whole childhood comes back at yeah. you. It's exciting. Oh, it is. Robert England is getting done up in the Freddy makeup. He's getting in it. Yeah, he's getting in it the first time in Europe. Great. So it's, it's going great. To... You know, he put the makeup on for a charity, and. And it was, a th- it was actually 30 years, I think. Yeah. I don't know. And then, um, but they pushed me in there and he, to get my picture taken with him. And I didn't, 
I didn't really put in any thought to it. So, they, you know, and hundreds of people were waiting to do it. So I went, oh, oh. And I just kind of like blew a kiss at him. Uh -huh. The same kiss that I had with him when I was, you know, 30 years prior. So I have a photo of like when I was a baby. Oh. Uh. With him. That is brilliant. One with I was older. I and then my I I look I still look like I you know get recognized. Not I'm not mean it in like oh I still look like I still look to a large part to that degree. I still look like myself. I still you have do. like my eyebrows or. Oh, sure. you've hardly aged at all. You found the secret, <laughs> the fountain of youth. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have to give a shout out to somebody who, an uh, Irish writer out. Oh, go, far away. His name is Monton Megan. He wrote a travel book of called Angels and Rabies. He's my favorite, a favorite Irish writer. He, we, he was traveling in um, Ecuador. Yeah. Met him, and he wrote a book about all of his travels and stuff. He put me in it. Oh, cool. Me by name, but in this book, he, I guess he was hiding in the bushes and spying on me. And <laughs> That's not what the book is about, but I read the book and I was like, oh, I had no idea he was in the bushes spying on me. So, um, but he, uh, uh, but Moncon, so if Moncon's listening to this, I'll say, hi, Moncon. Oh, cool. And hopefully now people might go check his book out now as well. Yeah, good. He has other travel books. He's he's quite the quite. He's a natural writer, but he's very adventurous. And he goes, you know, it was kind of like a backpacking place where we were. They went off to Peru. Uh, Peru. I went off to the Galapagos Islands, but it was kind of the you know, we made up stories and led, sang songs around the campfires. Oh, okay. And he he writes about it. And oh, that's really cute. Cool. Sort, sorts of interesting people. Not backpackers, but... Kind of doing it from a different angle well, than your typical travel book you'd get. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, Jennifer, thanks so much for joining me on the show today, and I can't wait to meet you in person in July. Yes, I can't wait to see you. Cool. I bring a doll or something. I will scare you. <laughs> <laughs> you might, and you might understand my accent better when I'm standing beside you. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'll know you. I'll, 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 I'll know. I know what you look like. Okay, <laughs> Rita, well, it was nice talking to you. Good luck with your show, and I uh, can't wait to meet you. Excellent. Thanks a million, Jennifer. Okay, bye, everybody, too. Bye.